We are in Rosen, Discrete Mathematics and Its Applications, section 10.8, where we are uh, discussing uh, graph coloring, and we're looking at problem 41, uh, which is the five color theorem for planar graphs. And we're taking this from the book solution to 41 uh, in, the, in the back of the textbook. So we want to prove that a connected planar simple graph with n vertices is five colorable. <clears throat> and to do this, we're going to use induction on the number of vertices. So we'll have a basis step, an inductive hypothesis, and then a rather involved inductive step. All right, so the basis step is straightforward. Every graph with five or fewer vertices is five colorable. And when that makes sense, and my inductive hypothesis, and also straightforward, all planar simple graph, connected planar simple graphs with k vertices are five colorable. So now for the inductive step, we want to consider a connected planar simple graph with k plus one vertices. And we'll use our inductive hypothesis to show that it's five colorable. Now we want to uh, remember corollary two in section 10.7 on planar graphs. We said we would be using it and here we go. It says that G, if it's connected planar and simple, must have a vertex V that has degree five or less. All right. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that vertex that, vertex that has degree five or less we're going to induce G prime, which now has K vertices. And then I'll use my inductive hypothesis to show that, uh, to say that G prime has a five coloring. Now, in the happy case one, if the neighbors of V and G prime do not use all five colors, then we can five color G by simply assigning the remaining color to V. Um, so that is fairly straightforward. And in fact, at this point now, if I wanted to say I was proving the six color theorem, I would essentially have it done. I would need to modify my inductive hypothesis to say that uh, uh, connected planar simple graphs with K vertices are six colorable. But other than that, we would essentially be done. But since we um, could possibly be using all five colors for the neighborhood of V, we have to consider the next case. So case 2A, if all five colors, and the book calls them azure, blue, chartreuse, magenta, and purple, um, and I'll use the initials with the underlining to represent color, not label. If all five of those colors are used in the neighborhood of V and G prime, um, let's suppose that those colors are used in the order above in a clockwise fashion around where V was. So I'll go to the next page. And here's an illustration of that. And here I am using the letter to represent both the label and the initial color of that vertex. Here's where V was in G, and I removed it. And here's um, A, which is azure, B, which is blue, C, which is chartreuse, M, which is magenta, and P, which is purple, in graph G prime. All right, now I want to consider the subgraph of G prime that is induced by only considering vertices that are azure and chartreuse. Um, if I do that, then the subgraph will include C and A, of course, and then anything that is connected to C and A that is has the colors of azure and chartreuse. If a and C then are not in the same connected component of that subgraph. And I have that illustrated here. If I have, if C is in a subgraph and A is in another subgraph and they are not connected in any way, 
then all I need to do is switch the colors of Azure and Chartreuse in one of these components so that that becomes Chartreuse and C becomes colored Azure. Or it could be the other way around in the other component. Then A becomes Chartreuse colored or C becomes Azure colored as I illustrated above. Thus, we show a way to four color the neighbors of V and G prime. And G prime remains properly five colorable because those two sub those two components were not connected. We color V, the now unused color. In this case, it would be uh, chartreuse for a five coloring of G. Great. Well, that's case 2A. But what if case 2B is what if A and C are in the same connected component of the Azure chartreuse subgraph? And we illustrate that here where A has some kind of alternating A Azure chartreuse path to C. Well, if that is what happens, let us consider also the edge that had been connected to A and to C from V. So if A and C are in the same Azure chartreuse subgraph, that means there's an AC path which along with V divides the plane into regions R1 and R2. There they are, R1 and R2. Uh, now we picked AC because we wanted to, because in this case, we want to induce different subgraphs to try to find a four coloring for the neighborhood of V. So we'll look at B and M in this case. B is in one region and M is in the other. So we're going to induce a blue magenta subgraph on G prime. Now, B and M must be in different connected components in case 2B, since edges cannot cross the region boundary between R1 and R2. Because remember, our, our graph by assumption is planar. Now we switch the colors of magenta and blue vertices in one of, the sub one of those components. Then B becomes M colored. We'll do that one. B B will become M colored, and that graph, that vertex will become B colored. Or M could become B colored again. It shows a way to four color the neighborhood of V in G prime. G remains properly five colored because those two blue magenta sub uh, graphs have our disconnected components. And then we color V with the fifth color remaining, which in this case would have been um, uh, blue. I'll put an underline there. And that gives us a five coloring of G. And that proves the five color theorem for planar graphs.